Okay. So any questions over last lecture? All that was okay? Okay. So, today, we're going to talk about uh, multiplication. So today's what, the 23rd? Uh, we'll, t we'll turn the homework in at the end. Okay. <clears throat> so today is about multiplication. <clears throat> so let uh, x be in the reals and let n be in the naturals. So uh, now I'm going to leave myself just a little bit of vertical space right here. I'm going to leave that because I'm going to fill it in in a second. I'm going to start right here. Uh, 2 multiplied by x. So we're, we're defining multiplication by a natural. So uh, what is multiplication by a natural? How do you do it? As supposing you don't already know what it is. Right. Did I already do this? No. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so this will be x plus x. It means make two copies of x uh, and add them up. Okay, then uh, 3 <coughs> multiplied by x. What do you suppose this means? <coughs> x plus x plus x. And then I think you can agree that this pattern could continue, right? We could get down to something like this, 2370 multiplied by x. What would that mean? Right, make 2370 copies of x <coughs> and add them all up. So that'd be x plus x plus x plus ellipsis all the way to x and how many times does x appear over here? 2370 which is of course the reason why this is called 2370 times x because it occurs that many times Okay, and then nx is the same, right? So n multiplied by x. That means uh, x plus x plus x plus dot 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 plus x. And there's n of them. So there's n x's. Okay, so now we want this to be uh, true for um, all naturals. So, so uh, what's the natural immediately smaller than two? One, right? So one multiplied by x, what does that mean? You make one copy of x and you take all those copies and add them all up, right? Okay, what's the natural immediately smaller than uh, Zero. one? Zero, right? So now, what I want you to look at is this pattern that we're establishing here. One x means make one copy of x and add them all up. Two x means make two copies of x and add them all up. 2370x means make 2370 copies of x and add them all up. Then what does zero times x mean? How does it fit in this pattern? Take zero copies of x and add them all up. Yeah, but if we do that, then can you see that there's nothing written on the right-hand side? It's like an incomplete sentence. Okay, well, the answer to the question is, uh, well, to foreshadow the answer to the question, do you observe that there's an asymmetric amount of horizontal space on either side of the equals? That's just not my style at all. 
Uh, so we're going to fill that in with what's missing. Uh, a multiplication by a natural is defined by, well, this one is 0. And then all of them have a 0 in front. So 0 plus all of that. 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 So really, there was an implied, when we were doing 3x, it means take a 0 and take three copies of x and add them all up. So 0x means take a 0 and take 0 copies of x and add, and add all of those items up. OK. Uh, good. So what I want you to uh, take away from this <coughs> is that multiplication <coughs> by uh, a natural is repeated <coughs> addition. Addition. Okay. So then, that being the case, uh, why is zero special? Here. So multiplication is repeated ad addition. So somehow, zero is special with regard to addition. It's the additive identity. Additive identity. OK, good. So any question about, uh, about this definition? OK, now. I'll say that that was one. Two, again, we'll say let, let x be in the reals, and let n be in the naturals. Again, I'm going to leave myself some uh, vertical space uh, that I'll fill in in just a second, and I'm going to start right here. So x to exponent 2 means what? Right. It means make two copies of x and multiply them together. So uh, x multiply x. And I'd also like to point out that, again, the horizontal space on either side of the equal is asymmetric currently. Uh, so then, probably no surprise when I say x to exponent 3 means what? Three copies of x, multiply them all together. OK. So suppose we go to the end, x to exponent n. What does that mean? n copies of x. And we're going to multiply them all together. Okay. Well, what I want you to see is that the exponent is counting up. 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 n. So the natural that proceeds 2 is 1. So x to exponent 1, which of course we usually just write as, as x, is what? Just x, right? Make one copy of x and then take all of those copies of x and multiply them all together. Okay, so then x to exponent 0 will be what then? <laughs> What are we supposed to do in keeping with this pattern? Make zero copies of x and multiply them all together. 
So do you see the, the problem is that we're facing is analogous to the one that we dealt with up there? That's because there's something that's not complete about this definition. What, what do we need to add to it? We need to put a one, right? So x to exponent zero is one, and there's a caveat there that I'll get to in a moment. And then here, there's a, there's a one multiplied by that, one multiplied by that, one multiplied by all that, one multiplied by all that. So really, x to exponent three, in, at least in the way we're defining it, really means take a one and take three copies of x and take all of those items and multiply them all together. That's what that means. Okay, well, so just like multiplication by a natural <coughs> is repeated addition, uh, raising, uh, x to a natural, uh, exponent is what? Repeated multiplication. Okay, so this is repeated multiplication. So evidently, one is somehow special with regard to multiplication. What is it? Is, is the multiplicative identity, right? So multiplicative, multiplicative identity. So I said when I wrote this, there, ha there has to be a caveat. So there, I there is a caveat. What, what caveat is, is there here? Right. Zero to zero is undefined. <coughs> this is uh, for x not zero. The expression zero to exponent zero is undefined. So any question about these, uh, these definitions? Any questions about them? Is this okay? Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to write uh, math functions that, that do this. Okay, so assuming that, uh, that we, don't, we don't have a, a definition for multiplication of a real by a natural, we're going to define it. <coughs> want to define uh, the the uh, in the natural real product uh, from the previous page. Okay, and this is assuming we know how to add in the reals, right? Because if you don't know how to add in the reals, then we can't do it. So we'll assume that, that that's something that we can do. 
Okay. <clears throat> so how about we call it, uh, we'll define a function. Uh, mult, give it a strange name here. Multiply underscore capital N underscore R. And it will be a function that has, uh, and that's a math, this is a math function, right? Uh, not a, uh, not a MATLAB function. It will take a natural argument and a real argument. So that's the kind of input that it takes. And then what kind of thing does it produce? A, a real. Okay, and we'll define this as, hmm, let's try and think about it. So, uh, mult underscore n underscore r of n and x. So it's going to have to be defined in cases, just like the, just like the previous functions. <clears throat> Okay. Well, one of them is, one of the cases at least, is pretty easy. What case will be pretty easy? Multiplication when n is zero. Okay, so when n is zero, what's the answer? It's zero, right? <laughs> It's zero. When n is zero, so that's easy enough. <laughs> that's easy enough. So now, uh, now we want to figure out how to do it. Uh, what if? What should be the definition if n is not zero? So in fact, I'm going to move. I'm going to move this. Uh, this guard in the first clause just a little bit to the right. Okay, so what should the next clause be? Well, let's think about it. What if we wanted to um, what if we wanted to multiply uh, x by five? Right. We'd want to make five copies of x. But can we agree, can we agree at any rate, whatever the product of five and x is, it's surely got to be the same as x plus the product of four and x. Right? Because, because if we take away just one x out of it, then we'd only have four more to go. Just like the product of 100 and x should be one x, plus how many more? Plus 99 more, right? Plus 99 more of them. Okay, so can we somehow write that down here? It's gonna be, it's gonna be one X, just one of them, and then we need to, we need to add how much more? And how will we? We need N minus one more of them. Right? Because if we're trying to do n of them, then it's got to be a single x plus n, one, n minus 1 more x's. So how can, we, how can we write that down? So, so again, this, what this represents... This represents n multiplied by x. That's what that represents. Plus nx minus. 
Plus what? No, no, no. No, we can't do any of that. None of that's defined. No, no. What is it? Ah. So we could write mult underscore n underscore r at, of what? n minus 1 because, well, I'm going to write n minus 1, but we all know that, you know, we, we'll have a different exercise. There will be a different exercise posted where you'll have to call this deck, right? <laughs> but now we're beyond that deck for decrement. But now I assume that we take it as given that you can subtract one from a natural that's more than zero. Okay, so, so what does this represent then? If that represents n, n multiplied by x, then what is this one? n minus 1 multiplied by x. So all together, in, so again, these individual lines are called what? Clauses. So and this is the first clause, and this is the second clause. And then in each clause, we've got, uh, we've got this bit and that bit. What's the name for that bit? Or what's the name for that bit? This is the guard, and this, the expression. <coughs> okay, so, so uh, in the second clause, in the second clause, how many x's are represented here? I claim that there's n x's represented here. Why are there n of them? Right, because here's one of them, and here's all but one of them. Okay, so x plus n minus 1 times x. Okay, so let's see if we can, let's see if we can work this definition. Okay, so for example, suppose that we want to evaluate mult underscore n underscore r, this is super tedious, but we'll do it, of 3 uh, and x. We'll just leave x indeterminate. So we're going to do that. Now, in the end, in the end, this is going to have to be the addition of four things. What four things? A zero and three copies of x. Right? So somehow, we've got to navigate the definition of this function and watch, watch four, th four things come into existence and have them all be added together. Okay, so uh, mult underscore n underscore r, <coughs> 3 and x. So which clause do we need to use? The second clause, right? The second clause. Uh, why the second clause? Right, so this is n, uh, and the, the only time we use the first clause is when, when the first argument is zero. So we'll use the second clause. And the second clause says that this is the same as, the same as what? X. X. Mult. Underscore N. Underscore R. And what are the new arguments? Two. And x, right? Assuming that we know how to decrement a natural now. 
Okay. Well, so we're not finished, right? Because there's still a, there's still a function evaluation. There's more work to do. Okay. Which, this part is finished, but we can't do anything with it yet. As long as there's still a function on the right hand, a function to be called on the right hand side, we have to continue working. Uh, well, which clause do we need to evaluate this one? Clause two again. Okay, so then that would be x, and then plus x, and then plus what? Molt. Uh, molt underscore n underscore r. And then what are the new arguments? 1 and x. Okay, so there's still a function. So it's got to be evaluated. Okay, so which clause will we use now? Two. Okay, so then that would be x plus x plus what? Plus an x and then plus what? Mult underscore n underscore r of what arguments? Zero and x. So there's still a function to evaluate, so there's still work to do. Don't get ahead of yourself, right? MATLAB, MATLAB's not going to get ahead of itself. <laughs> it's going to do exactly what you tell it. So now, uh, there's still a function to be evaluated, which means that there's still work to do. Uh, now, which clause will we need to use? We'll need to use the first clause. And then we'll have x <coughs> plus x plus x plus what? Zero. <coughs> ah, good. So do you observe that... Uh, that it, it worked as advertised. <coughs> that to do, three, to do three times x, we, in the end, needed to make four objects. We needed to make three x's and a zero, and then add them all up. Okay, and if, it's, if, if it said molt underscore n underscore r, and the first argument was like uh, three million, then that, that would be a lot of writing, <laughs> right? Okay, but in principle, do you see that you could do it, <coughs> pencil and paper? So we can take this as a working definition of, of what it means to multiply by a natural. Any questions about it? This is okay. So now, <coughs> I want to give you uh, a second. So I want you to now do um, the following. See if you can write it down. So now we want uh, to define uh, two, starts with a T, uh, real, uh, define a real with a natural exponent uh, again from two pages ago uh, and I want so I want you to I'm going to give you a minute to do it. I want you to do it by analogy to this. By analogy to this. So think about how you can get it to work. And furthermore, I want it to have the following properties. Uh, with the properties that that uh, 
What am I trying to say? If n is 0 and x is 0, I want this to be left undefined. Uh, and 2, I want you to have x equal to 0 as a special case. And I take the convention that because item 2 occurred after item 1, uh, in order for item 2 to be true, that means that item 1 is not meaning that x is 0 and n isn't. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and give it the same name. Let's name it. So what do we want to call it? <coughs> EXP. I kind of hesitate to do that. He EXP, is that good? I, I kind of hesitate to do that because it kind of reminds me of the exponential function. How about the, yeah, let's do POW, I guess, would be good because that, that's what it's usually called in computer science. So let's call it uh, POW underscore N underscore R. And then what's its math signature? Right, it takes a natural first argument and the second argument, real, and produces what kind of thing? A real. Okay, so I want you to see if you can work it out right, right here and now. Can we assume we already know that multiplies? Yes, uh, yes, thank you. This is uh, <laughs> assuming. we have uh, the product of reals already. two clauses on the previous function. It may be the case that you need more than two on this one. Just while you're thinking about it, uh, I'll mention to all of you who have uh, written programs before, um, that, and you, you know what, it, what I mean when I say loop. Yes, MATLAB has loops. It does. But we are purposefully <coughs> not talking about them whatsoever uh, for, two, for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that this is a math class, and the central objects of study in a math class are functions. Okay. And as a result, we're going to do the vast majority of our work using functions only. The second reason uh, is that 
generally speaking, if you want to do something over and over again, uh, like you can see that on the previous exercise we wanted to do something over and over again. We wanted on this on the exercise we wanted to do something three times. But and you can imagine if we wanted to do it 33 times. Uh, there's two games in town, mainly in computer science. There's recursive functions like what we're defining here and loops. Uh, my experience tells me that students who learn loops before recursive functions are polluted uh, in their mind and they have very much difficulty getting, getting their heads wrapped around recursive functions. So we're going to do recursive functions before loops to try and avoid that <coughs> problem. <coughs> Does anybody have a good idea? Anybody think they have it? Yeah? yeah? So let's see. Someone can help me through it. So of course it'll have to be defined as pow underscore n underscore r of n and x. And then we'll need a big brace here. Okay, so what's the uh, first case? Okay. So, well, to say to say that something is undefined, you just don't define it, right? It's just <laughs> it's just it's just not it's just not there, right? Well, I guess I guess we could be specific. Uh, we're gonna we're going to you know go boom or whatever. When what? when uh, x equal to 0 and n is equal to 0. OK, fine. That's not very math mathematical, but I think you take my meaning. OK, uh, then what's, what, what, would be, what could be the next case? 0 when what? When x is 0. So why, why did you do that? Right, and I, and I said uh, take take x equal to zero to be a special case. Okay, fine. I need to move this and, otherwise I'm not going to have enough room. So and. Okay, then what? One. One. When what? Okay. When n is zero, and what? Uh huh. Times the pow thingy. <clears throat> right. Okay, so we did it in uh, <clears throat> in uh, four clauses. Of course, uh, you know, we're being a little bit fast and loose with this kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> really, you know, instead of doing this sort of silly clause number one thingy, uh, it would be better to, to you know, de to define the domain a little, <laughs> a little better. But I hope, I hope you understand what I mean. So any questions about this? Yes, the, guard, the guards are checked uh, top to bottom. 
The first one that matches is the one that wins. Okay. So, for example, for example, uh, pow underscore in underscore r of say zero and zero, then what? <laughs> Boom, right? <laughs> Boom, right? Blows up, won't work. Uh, by the way, why, why is this, uh, so this one is, clause two is good because it's the special case that when you're raising zero to a, to a positive natural, the answer is going to be zero. Uh, clause three, why is that good? Right, you're raising a non-zero real to zero. That's going to be one. And then why is clause four good? Why does that work? Right. So what this one represents, you know, we, we already know in our head, in our hearts, what we mean by this. We mean x to exponent n. That's what that means. Okay. As a result, this, this right here means, well, it's that x and then multiplied by what? What is this? x to exponent n minus 1. So can you see that, you know, according to our notions of what this is supposed to be, that this is right? Okay, so let's see if we can, uh, if we can do one. So, so I guess, you know, technically, you know, what, what made this happen is that clause one made it, made it go boom, I guess. Okay, so then how about, uh, as a second example? How about uh, pow underscore n underscore r of, uh, say, uh, 2370 and 0? What would that be? Clause 3. It would be clause 2, right? be clause 2 uh, because clause 2 uh, notice what clause 2 is the, the guard 2 is asking for when x is 0 and which one of these is x the second one right so then so this this just like this represents x to n what does this what is this asking about It's asking about zero to twenty three seventy. That's what that's what this one is. And, and what what is this one asking about? Zero to zero. And that's why this one went boom. Uh, so we can we can evaluate this one. And the clause that matches is the third clause. And what's the answer? Uh, thank you, second clause. Okay, then what's the answer? Zero. Easy enough. <clears throat> Nothing more to do. That's nice. Okay. <clears throat> so then pow underscore n underscore r. How about a, a reasonable... Um, in. So how about 2? And we'll just leave this as x so we can watch. Let's not make it x. Let's make it something more exciting like uh, y. <laughs> okay, just so we can see what is going to happen. So what, what, what do we, according to the definition two pages ago, what needs to happen? Right. We're going to need three items. We're going to need a 1, and we're going to need two y's, 
and we're going to need them all to be multiplied together. That's what this should be. Uh, let's, let's verify that, that this works. <clears throat> okay. So to evaluate this pow underscore n underscore r, uh, well, which clause matches? The fourth clause. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, as a result, what do I need to write? Y multiplied by pow underscore n underscore r. And what are the arguments now? One and y. Okay. Uh, fine. You can see that there's still a, still a function evaluation, which means that there's work uh, left to do, so we must do it. In order to evaluate this, what clause will we need? The fourth clause again. So then this will be y multiplied by what? Another y. And then what? Pow. Multiplied by pow underscore n underscore r. And then what are the new arguments? Zero and y. Zero and y. Still work to do. So now what clause do we use? The third clause. And then it'll be y multiplied by y, because those were already there, multiplied by what? One. So conceptually speaking, we know that this is supposed to represent what? This one. Y squared. Do you see that that's what the function did? That's what the function will do. So even if we didn't have, you know, if we had never heard of, of uh, raising a real to a natural exponent, now we have it. So, so part, of what, part of what you'll have to do uh, for the programming exercises, you're going to end up writing a program that does this. Yes? Why are we writing boom instead of unbind? I was just trying to be cute. No, okay, so it is, we're just saying uh, yeah, I mean, okay. in, in okay. Let, so let let's let's talk about that for a second. So in you know to 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 be to make it proper in a math class, the way what we what I really should have done is I should have I should have done something like this. Uh, I should have said that the domain. Let me write it in red. I should have said that the domain uh, is the naturals cross the reals and then uh, subtract zero zero. That would have been a better way to do it. Okay, and then just not even had clause number one. It's just not even there. But in MATLAB, you'll have, you'll have to have a clause number one where you detect, well, is it the case that n is zero and also x is zero? If that is the case, then invoke the error function and make it go boom. Right. Yeah. Did you have a question up there? Yeah. It was just going to be. Do we just make an error then? Yes. 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 Um, do you also just do like n star cross r star? Well. Yeah, but you still want to be able to do, for example, uh, seven to exponent zero. Right, so you still you want it to be the case where one or the other can be zero, but not both. Yeah. Other questions? So, uh, well, so I, we're not we're not going to really do this, but I want you to just uh, consider it for a moment. Pow, pow underscore n underscore r, and then suppose we do like uh, twenty three seventy. And W. Let's consider that for a moment. So um, 
How many clause ones would be required? None. None. How many clause uh, twos would be required? Assuming, of course, so I, I need to say it up here too, assuming that y is not zero for this one and that w is not zero for this one. So uh, there, for this particular one, uh, we'd, have no, we'd have zero clause ones. How many clause twos? Zero clause twos, because because the the second argument, the real the real argument is non-zero. Uh, how many clause threes? Just one. That's when you leave. Bye bye. And then how many clause fours? Twenty three seventy. Right. Wow, that would be a significant um, amount of writing if we were to do that by hand. MATLAB will do it. MATLAB will, will ha you know, happily, if, if it makes sense to even say that, MATLAB's just going to do it, <laughs> whatever you say. Uh, but wouldn't it be nice if we could somehow get away with um, doing this far more rapidly? Instead of requiring uh, for this the evaluation of 2,371 clauses, what if we could do it uh, on the order of like 22 clauses? Wouldn't that be great? That'd be a lot less clauses. So let's see if we can figure that out. <clears throat> so I have a question for you. Uh, what base do we count in? Base 10. And by we, I mean human beings. And human beings count in base 10. And, that, and that's a nice thing, one of the nice things about uh, about world culture as it currently stands is that, uh, well, Americans count in base 10, um, European nations count in base 10, uh, Asian nations, uh, Middle Eastern nations, all of them. That I'm essentially, not, not, it's probably not right to say all, but, but the vast majority of all nations these days count in base 10. Now why is that? Is there something like, well, let me say this. Pi is special. Pi is a special number. It's special because it's the, it, it has to do with the ratio of sizes of, of any circle. And the natural, the natural base, Euler's number, is special. My question to you is, is 10 special? I mean, all of us are counting in base 10. Is 10 special? It is not. It's not. Uh, then why do we all count in base 10? Well, we could achieve the same thing by counting in base 8. Is 10 the largest base? No, you could count in base 11. That'd be just fine. So why is it that essentially, essentially every human culture that's, that exists uh, currently counts in base 10? <laughs> we have 10 fingers. That's it. It's just, <laughs> it's just that simple, right? Okay. So th through, 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 through whatever historical circumstances, okay, we have 10 fingers. I guarantee that if, we, if historical circumstances had been that we had eight fingers, we'd count in base eight. I just guarantee it. There's nothing special about 10. Okay. Uh, as a result, I have a question for you. Suppose that I give you uh, this number, say like 23.70, uh, and I want you to multiply it by uh, 12.34. So that, I don't want you to do it yet. 12.34 uh, versus uh, 23.70 multiplied by, uh, say, a thousand. In fact, I'll just make this, instead of making that one, two, point, three, four, I'm just going to make it one, two, three, four. Because the, the point I'm trying to make is illustrated just as good either way. Okay. Now, between these two possibilities, which one is is easier for us to deal with. 
A thousand. What if I make it ten thousand? Then surely that's harder. Ah, oh, but ten thousand so big. Why is this one? Why is this one easy for us? Right, because after all, we count in base ten. This number is in base ten, and ten thousand can be represented as ten to exponent what? Four. So to multiply by 10,000 means to do what to this number? To shift the point to the right, four places, right? So this one is like super easy. <laughs> 2, 3.70. Uh, and if we shift it to the right four places, that's 1, 2, and then I fell off the side, 3, 4. And when you fall off the, the edge there, what, what, do you have to, what do you have to do? Put zeros there, right? Zeros because that's the additive identity. OK, so that one's easy. Of course, you could, in principle, multiply by 1, 2, 3, 4. You could do that. Uh, but what I want to point out is that it's far easier, even though 10,000 is the bigger number, it's easier to multiply by 10,000. Okay. Uh, fine. And the only reason that we count in base 10 is that we have 10 fingers. Now here's something else. The machine, the computer, also counts. Uh, does it count in base 10? It does not. What base does the machine count in? Base 2. Base 2 because if you were to get out a microscope, if you were to disassemble whatever machine you're using and get out a microscope and look at it, you'd find all manner of very intricate devices inside of it. Uh, and one of them is called a transistor. One of them is called a transistor. And wh what a transistor is, is just an, a, little, is a little electrical device that uh, when you apply a high voltage to it, it does one thing. And when you apply a low voltage to it, it does a different thing. And then, believe it or not, uh, all of YouTube and cat videos and everything, seeing cats playing pianos and stuff like that, it's all built on that principle okay, of, the, of the transistor. So uh, computers count in base 2 because, uh, more or less, transistors have two states, the low voltage state and the high voltage state. So computers count in base 2. Uh, as a result, uh, for humans, it is easy to multiply or divide by 10, or even lots of 10s, like 10, like 10,000 being four 10s. So what, what is easy for computers then? To, to multiply and divide by two. So this, uh, this is called, uh, well, in grade school, probably your teacher said a shift or moving the decimal place. So in computer science context, multiply or divide by two is called a shift. So, all of that discussion being said, uh, just like <clears throat> it is easy for humans counting in base 10, to multiply or divide <coughs> by tens. So in, in, the, in the exact same way, uh, computers which count in base two can easily uh, multiply or divide by two. OK. So we're going to use this to, gr to great effect. That's my reminder to collect your homework in a second. Uh, well, 
from from a couple pages ago from a couple pages ago we defined what that means that means that we need to we need to construct 65 items 1 0 and 64 x's and add them all up so we need we need 65 different items we need and we for the function that defined that we need 65 different clause evaluations okay but what I want you to see is the following. Uh, suppose that we could do it like this. Suppose we said that, well, maybe x1 is a single x. Okay. Then I'll say that x2 is, I'm going to add the x1s together. So how, much, how many x's do I have so far, remembering that x1 is a single x? That'd be, that'd be two x's, right? So this would be two multiplied by x is what, that, is what that is. Suppose then that we say that x3 is, well, we're going to add the x2's together. How many x's do we have now? Four. We have four of them, right? Now, what am, what am I going to say x4 is? I'm going to say that it's x3 plus x3. x3 plus x3. Now how much x do we have? 8x's, right? OK. Now what? x5 is going to be what? x4 plus x4. Now how much x do we have? We have 16 of them. OK. I'll say that x6 is x5 plus x5. And we have 32 x's. And x7. I'll say that that's x6 plus x6, and that's 64 x's. So now, adding a number to itself, that's easy for a computer to do because, because uh, after all, a plus a is 2a. And 2a is easy for a computer because what? Because it counts in base 2. So that's a shift. Huh. So, how many additions did we need to get to 64x? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of them. And I'd like for you to observe that 6 is better than 64. Okay, so we'll continue talking about this uh, next time. So have a nice day. Please turn in your homework.